Well, hi there. My name's Beth, and this is the story of how I renovated my 117-year-old Dutch sailing barge. This week, a boat through time. So because we've got a couple of weeks until we can leave the yard, I thought I'd do a quick episode about the history of the boat, at least the history that I know about at the moment. There's still big gaps and I'd like to find out a little bit more, but let me tell you what I found out so far. So this is the boat. This is a Hope Pavel boat, which is Hope of Prosperity in Dutch. She is a type Tjelk, although she's a bull Tjelk really, because this refers to her round bow shape. Although, strictly speaking, she's a type scootcher, which is a sailing barge. She looks reasonably similar to this one, with her foresail, mainsail and a gaff rig. While tracing the history of the boat, I found a brand mark in the paperwork, which relates to a measurement of the boat back in 1941. These measurements were of commercial boats and logged some details about the vessels, including the dimensions, the location and the owner. So using this website, you can put in the brand number and select a few other options, although we're just going to go straight for the brand number, and you find the record. This record links to a ton of detail. So this search yielded the scan of this page of the ledger, and right down at the bottom there is a reference to Hope of Velvart. All the details have been transcribed onto this website, and you can see a few interesting things, including the measurement location, which is the G in the number. The N refers to the Netherlands. The measurement location is Groningen, which is in the north of the Netherlands, actually in an area called Frisia, and that's where Scootcher boats come from. And also this area has the most amazing flag, which I'm going to fly as a courtesy flag. So on the Beams measurement service, you can see a bunch of details about the boat. But one interesting thing is that there's another measurement for that boat. So this measurement I found was from 1941. But if you click through this number, which starts HZ and ends in N again, you'll find this record. So one of the most interesting things about this is that the ship was called at some point Luctor et Emergo. And because this measurement was from 1905, she was constructed in 1904, then that might be her first name. So this measurement location is in Hoogersand, and that is quite close to Groningen, just a bit further down, near the village of Wildewank, which is where one of the owners actually lived. So looking at this measurement, you can see a bunch of details, including a scan of all of the original documents. One of the documents here is quite interesting, although I can't really read much of it, because it's quite hard to put handwritten text through Google Translate. But there's an interesting thing that there's a, a name Emmanuel which comes up later on and this is in 1927 although later on in the doc, same document there's another name Hope of Velvart. So looking through some other documents you can see this which I think is a mortgage and on that mortgage this ship is named Emmanuel or at least it appears to be and this is in 1927. So could it be that Pre-1927, the boat was called Emmanuel, because in 1904, the boat we know was looked at at Emergo, and by 1941, we know it was Hope of Velvart, which is the name that's kept today. So interestingly, I found this other photograph during my research, which isn't the boat, but it's what the boat might look like. And this would be in a family that lived on board, a boat very similar to Hope of Velvart. You can see the difference is that they have their cargo space with wood on top. And you can also see an aft cabin which the family are sitting on. Hope of Volvart doesn't have this. She actually has an open cockpit. So I wonder if there actually was an aft cabin there at some point. So the last record I found was 1941. But during the renovation of the boat, I actually took a piece of wood out which had a sticker on. And that sticker has the date of 1998. Now... This wood came from the ceiling of the of the main cabin, and I suspect that would have been put in first. So I think 
that the renovations on the boat would have been 1998 at least, and probably going into 1999. So when the boat was stripped out, you can see some interesting details. The steel above this line is quite red, but the steel below is quite dark. And that's because the steel below was the original steelwork of the cargo boat. The steel above is actually much later, and it could have even been round about the 1990s that it was put in. So there's a few interesting things. You'll see just above the green line here, there is a line of kind of rust and weld, and that's where the new red plate was being attached to. There's also some interesting little hangers here, and these wrap around the edge of the new plate, but they don't actually touch it. And what I suspect these were, were the supports for the original collar for the original cargo space. So maybe round about the 1990s, this was cut out and replaced with this new plate to make a cabin. I don't really have much more documentation after that. I found this birthing agreement from 2009, and that's from the Haven Museum. And the Haven Museum is down in Rotterdam. And so it could be that the boat spent a little bit of time in this marina, which looks really lovely and maybe worth a trip in future. So the next paperwork I could find was from the 17th of September 2012, where the boat was sold to somebody that came from London. And at that point, she was moved from Rotterdam all the way over to the Thames, although the journey probably looked a little bit more like this. I don't really have a lot more detail about what happened during that time, but I do know the owner, so I'm going to fill this gap in with just as soon as we can meet up. But on the 30th of October 2017, she was sold again, although she remained on her same berth. So fast forward to 27th of November 2020, and this was when I purchased the boat, and me and Bertie moved on board. So there are some big gaps in the history, but when I've discovered more, I'll do another video and tell you about it. But at the moment, I'm just planning on what tools and stuff that I need to take down to the boat for the next few months. And in a couple of weeks, I'll hopefully be able to do a video of leaving the yard. Thanks for watching. See you next week.